Hello and welcome to Star Steer 2020.3. I will be walking through a relatively simple mapping exercise today. So the objective here is we've got four wells, two drilled in the Wolf Camp A up here with the seismic horizon here in orange. The same in the lower Wolf Camp B down here with the Wolf Camp C seismic horizon here in red with the dashed lines. And what we're going to do today is incorporate some of our geosteered horizons as well as our seismic grids and generate a new regional grid that honors both sets of data. So real quick about seismic grids in star steer. Let me turn on map view really fast. They are saved as XYZ point sets. As you can see here and just make sure that uh, you're bringing everything in, in the same coordinate reference system and these will always line up just fine for you. You can import and export them in this format or others. And this is kind of how they appear in the map view here and can be manipulated in our grid format tab. So you can turn off the contour lines altogether and just have the color backdrop. You can change the color palette up here. There's a variety of options. Change your contour interval. Whether or not the contour lines are labeled. And what size label, I think I just uh, maxed it off the screen there. And then the label interval, and this is just how frequently do they appear. So that's, they're not even appearing on the screen. And here they're all over the place. So you want to try and pick one that's kind of a happy medium. So coming back in cross section view, you can still use this grid format tab, much like you would in Microsoft Office, come up here to line and you can change the color, change whether it's dashed, what the weight of the line is, anything that uh, you think looks good for your presentation. So let's zoom in here. We're going to work on this uh, Wolf Camp A set of wells here. So we've got two wells up here with the target zones highlighted in green. And we're going to try and map this upper target base right here. So this is our first well. And I'll turn off well two just because this grid horizon is currently displaying as it would project to uh, well one here. And this is what we're going to start with. And for those who've been paying uh, close attention to the details on the screen here, you'll see that I've got three segments turned off, one here at the land and two here at the toe of the well. Now it's not a mistake, that's on purpose. And it will become important when I go to create my control points here but this is how you exclude certain sections of the well from your control point creation. You, you deactivate these segments. So you do it just by clicking on the bar here. So in this case, I don't want to include the section of the well during the uh, land and curve, and I don't want to include the very toe. And you can do this for a variety of reasons. You can turn off segments if you don't have a lot of confidence in your interpretation over that interval if you don't want to include calculation artifacts from the land and curve section of the well, if you don't want to include the toe of the well because your cone of uncertainty out there introduces more error into your grid than you'd like. There, and it's just as simple as deactivating these segments. So the first step for creating our control points here, I'm going to come into my well, open my interpretation that I've got named final interpretation. They're all named final interpretation. You'll want to have consistent naming for this, and that, that becomes important later if you try to use the Python script for this same task. So here's the horizon I want to create off of, this Wolf Camp A upper target base. And you right click on it, two points. So there's a variety of options here for how these points are created. I'm going to do a manual spacing of 250 feet, and I'm going to check this displayed segments only box. This is where turning off the segments over here becomes relevant. So now it's not going to include segments that are not displayed in this control point creation. So I select OK. I've got a polygon file down here now. And that's how these control points are saved is XYZ point sets here in our polygon section. So those are my control points. If I come to polygon format, I can, I'll make the size bigger so we can see them. Turn it on. And there are control points right there for that horizon. All right. And I can do the same thing for well two. I'll turn well two on, make it active. Turn off one. And so there's the control points for well one. Let's do the same thing for well two. 
Open my interpretation. Upper A, target base. Right click to points. Now we'll remember the settings I had last time. So 250 feet, display and sediments only. Okay. So here's my new file, my new set of control points for well two. Let's blow them up so we can see them. So these are the control points I'm going to use to modify my grid here. Now remember, this first set is from well one. So this is what's coming from well two. So I'll turn both wells back on, make well one active again. So before I proceed here, I've got two input files here that I want to use as control. Now up here, I've created a folder, A upper target base. And to create a folder, you just right click on polygons and select new folder. I'm going to bulk select both of these control point files I've just created and put them in this folder. And this, this is important and I'll explain why here in just a second. So here we are in map view. And then let's get into mapping mode. So modes, mapping. So the reason I need to put these two control point files in a folder is because in the input section here in the mapping mode toolbar, I can only point this at one target out of the polygon file. So it's bringing up what it sees in this polygon section here, but I can only point it at one thing. So if I point it at the folder, it will grab both of these now. So that's how you include multiple files. You have to put them in a folder. Okay, so let me turn this off. Let's turn on my land grids. So this is just a shape file for my section lines. So the next item down here is outline. And I'm going to come back to that in just a minute, as I am with grid. Grid is just you're telling it whether or not you want to make a new grid or if you want to replace an existing one. I want to make a new one. So here's your grid size. Here's your cell size. And then it will default to this. You can change it if you want to. Here's where you can select from three gridding algorithms. For structure maps, we generally suggest convergent interpolation. But if you want to know more about uh, the various gridding algorithms, you can just hover your mouse over the uh, information button here. And trend is where you can direct it to include a seismic grid in the, in the gridding process here. So I'm going to leave this blank for the moment and show you what happens if I just run based on the input data. So here's our new grid. As you can see, it's just created a small little local grid based off of nothing more than the input control that we had. And you can even see where I turned the segments off at the landing and toe ends of the well because it didn't include any of the gridding along that, end, along that uh, section. It's just covered where we had data. So, I mean, that's not really terribly useful, at least not for what we're trying to do right now. I'm gonna delete that one. And let's zoom out. So we need to establish the aerial extent of the grid we want, which is the seismic grid that we have. So to do that, and this is where the outline section up here comes in, you right click on the grid that you want to create an outline from, select to outline, and it's created another file here in your polygons folder, which is nothing more, I turn the grid off, I don't even turn the land grid off, than a line around the perimeter of the grid which I can now come up to outline and say, use that as the outline. You can see the grid size just got a lot bigger. All right, I'm still going to create a new grid. So I'm going to use some convergent interpolation, but I'm going to turn the trend box on now and point it at the Wolf Camp B seismic grid, this grid. So I'll turn on. All right. So if I run this now, See, now we've got our new regional grid. So before I display this, I want to verify the settings I have for the display of this grid so that when I turn it on, we can compare like to like settings. So interval increment of 10, label size 5, 10 interval. So let's make sure those numbers are the same. 10, 5, 10, turn the labels on. So here is our new grid. We'll zoom in. And you can see it's flexed a little bit, or actually flex may not be the right word. It's been regridded to include the control from the horizons we just created. So we can verify that 
by coming back over here to our cross section, if I turn the new grid on and maybe make it a little more visible, you can see that it's honoring our data pretty well perfectly. And we can even see where these segments turned off because it didn't use control points down through here. So the geosteering interpretation out near the toe actually dropped some, but the grid that we just created is following the trend of the seismic grid. And it will do this for the entire grid outside of where you have control. So right near these wells right here, it's honoring those geosteering horizons. And away from the wells, it's honoring the seismic control. So you now have a new regional grid that honors both your seismic control as well as your uh, interpreted horizons. So if you were to then try and steer a well nearby, you've got an updated grid based off of your most recent operational data. Okay, so let's turn this one off. What about those Wolf Camp B wells that we had from earlier? Well, let's turn them on. And let's make well, th well three active. So here's our Wolf Camp C as it projects to as it uh, projects to well three here. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to use this Wolf Camp B target base to create a new set of control points. Except this time, I'm going to use Python script to do it. So we have this script, create polygons from tops and horizons. It's in our tops operations template folder here. And the advantage this script has to the way I did it for the Wolf Camp V horizons is that this will do it in bulk. So I'm only doing it for two wells in this project, but if you're trying to run this on say 50 wells and you don't want to go through each one and select the horizon and select two points, this script will be your salvation. So, and it's, it's, it's a simple, it's, this is our new Python uh, script interface here in 2020.3. So I'm going to select the two wells I want to include. As I said, you can select a great many more than two. And you just drag and drop it in here and it will insert those correct values. Or correct the correct syntax more accurately. Then you come in, you find the horizon you want to use. So in this case, lower wolf camp B target base. Drag that, drop it in the correct spot here. All right, and this is where you want to have that consistent naming scheme for your interpretations and your top sets. I've used final interpretation for mine. And then there's some optional scenarios. So I want to do a 250 foot spacing. I want to set an inclination start point of 85 degrees. That's telling it to not collect control points until the well survey hits 85 degrees. You're effectively cutting the curve and the um, vertical out of the well when you do this. There's an MD cutoff, and this is where you could try and cut off the toes of your well if you wanted to. In this case, I'm just going to collect the whole well. And if that's what you want to do, just make this an obscenely large number and you'll get everything. And then finally, the, the uh, vertical distance between the horizon, your target horizon, and the lateral. If it is greater than what you set here, so in this case 30 feet, then it will not collect control points for that section of the well. And this is kind of your control for if the horizon becomes too far from the well bore and you're you, and you kind of be, you get less and less certainty for where that horizon really is and this is where you can kind of control that so you can make this really small or you can make this really large depending on how generous you want to be in that regard so i'm going to go ahead and run this all right so points lower wolf can't be target base created and close this lower wolf can't be target base, there's my polygon file, and it's put both wells in that one, and if you run this on 50 wells, they'll all be in that one file, so you don't have to create a folder. All right, so let's turn that off, and that off. Let's turn our C seismic on, and let's go back to mapping mode. So in this case, I'm gonna change my input to that lower wolf camp target base, my new one, I can keep using the same outline because this B and the C seismic horizon have the same outline. Otherwise, you just use the same process to create a new one. New, except now I want to use the trend of the Wolf Camp C seismic. Run it. All right. So our settings here, remember, let's keep them the same so that when we compare, we're looking at the same thing. So 10, 5, and 10 again. 
10, 5, turn that on, and 10. And there we go. We have a new grid that honors our control, and we can check that. So we turn this on. Again, I'll blow it up for you so we can see it. All right, honors our uh, control, and right here, it clearly didn't collect control points right there, and my bet is that if you see the horizon dip and the well bore go up, I'm betting that exceeded 30 feet. So it, that's probably why it didn't collect control points right through there. So that's mapping in Star Steer. Um, these maps, as I've said, are XYZ point files, so they're very easy to import and export to pretty much any other software you'd like. You can do your mapping here in Star Steer and export the maps out. You can export the control point files out as they are still just XYZ target points. And if you want to do your mapping in something else, you can export your control and do it right in there and then bring the grid you make there right back into Star Steer. We don't put any of these files in any proprietary format, so they are easy to move in and out. And with that, I will bid you all a good day. I certainly hope you learned something and wish you all the best. Thank you.